Hello, good morning to everybody. First of all, thanks to the organizer to invite me to speak about uh, radical species and the problem and the methods to uh, analyze and obtain some information about the presence of radicals in solution. Um, during my talk, I uh, try to give you an overview about the methods, general, a more common method to, the, to obtain information about radicals. And I focus, and successively, I will focus my and your attention on uh, the specific method, which is electron uh, spin resonance, because it's uh, a specific uh, technique which is able to obtain uh, more information about the nature and presence of radicals. First of all, we can uh, make an overview about uh, the radicals in solution because uh, we have to take in consideration um, the nature of these radicals because uh, in water we have obviously reactive oxygen species uh, which are usually more uh, uh, unstable and uh, but we can, uh, especially in uh, natural water, we can also have uh, other inorganic radicals like uh, chlorine or dichlorine and ions radicals, like uh, sulfate and ions radicals deriving, for uh, example, for, from uh, peroxymonosulfate uh, treatment or carbonate and ion radicals and uh, we can also have uh, organic radicals um, and uh, um, the properties of each of radicals are different in, in, and their stability uh, are uh, quite different. So we can have uh, very, very unstable species uh, respect to very stable uh, species and uh, the method we need uh, to use to obtain information, obviously we are different, must be different. So the second aspect is which detection techniques we can use to obtain information about the presence of radicals. More of them, most of them are, are uh, common techniques like UV visibles, fluorescence, chemiluminescence, so technique, uh, specific techniques like uh, magnetic resonance, nuclear or electrons, mass spectrometry, liquid scintillation counting, and so on. Uh, I give you, I want to pay your attention about uh, one aspect. Ex mm, almost all of these uh, techniques are uh, useful for the characterization and determination of different species of uh, substances and not specific for radicals. The only one specific for radical species is uh, electron spin resonance. So it's common to read the literature uh, about um, radical species uh, in solution or not, and to see some spectra like this one, uh, like this. So uh, I think it's useful uh, to know exactly what kind of information uh, we can uh, obtain by analyzing this kind of spectra. Another aspect is uh, we have to choose uh, the correct analytical method um, so, in the choice of a method, we have to consider some main aspects like uh, sensitivity, uh, because in general radical species are present in uh, low concentration, selectivity and specificity in, or specificity in order to uh, be sure of the uh, presence of, of a specific radical and not another radical, and uh, um, related with the instability, instability of the species, uh, we have to choose methods we are able, able to uh, allow measurement with a sufficiently fast time resolution in order to uh, avoid the lack of, uh, of information. When we have, we have obvious, obviously some other additional aspects like avail availability of the method in, in terms of instrumentation, uh, the robustness of this method uh, respect to the uh, matrix we have to analyze, the portability if we are interested to study uh, in the field, uh, the presence of radicals in natural water, for example. 
and uh, last but not least, uh, the cost of instrumentation and of the reagent we need to obtain, uh, to apply this method. The third aspect uh, to consider is uh, the kind of strategies we can use uh, to obtain uh, some uh, useful information. Since uh, in presence of uh, uh, radicals not so unstable, with a lifetime sufficiently long, we can use direct methods. But in the most cases, we have unstable, very unstable radicals, and so we, have, we need to use indirect methods. We need to use different probes able to bind the radicals and to stabilize a final product which can be revealed by one of the, or another of the just mentioned techniques. Moreover, one of, of the kind of information we have uh, interesting in this kind of studies is the uh, kinetic of the species. So we can use also a consider to use steady state analysis or stop flow methods in um, uh, depending from the uh, concentration and the stability of the radical we need to observe and some other um, technique in order to have uh, to obtain the right information about the development and um, the cardiment of, of radical species. Well, let me know only three quick examples taken from the literature but there are very, very many other uh, examples we can uh, choose, or we are confident, probably. Uh, the first example is concerning the doxy radical, because it was one of the most important species we, we obtain in uh, water solution. The problem of the doxy radical is that it's a very low concentration. In um, sunlight, natural waters, we have very, very uh, low uh, uh, amount uh, which can be uh, enhanced by oxidation processes, but uh, it is uh, very unstable. It will the lifetime of oxyl radicals is in the order of microsecond. So it's uh, a very fast uh, transforming different species uh, and uh, generally is not uh, uh, revealable by direct methods. So the strategy is to use an indirect method with, uh, for example, in this case, uh, fluorescence as a, a method to reveal the, the presence of the radical and uh, gamma radiolysis to generate the radical. In this experiment, uh, hydroxyl radical generated by gamma radiolysis of water were uh, reacts with uh, um, terephthalate, which is not fluorescent, and give uh, um, hydroxyl terephthalate, which is fluorescent. So, in this, with a lot of uh, experiment of this kind, we have a, a possibility, the authors <laughs> give a possibility, to obtain information about uh, the presence of hydroxyl radical. This is an example, obviously. The second example is superoxide. Uh, superoxide is quite uh, stable respect to hydroxyl radical, but it can rapidly re react with uh, um, hydrogen uh, peroxide radical. Uh, and the disproportion give, give uh, unradical species. So, we, and also in this case, we generally have a need to uh, utilize, uh, to use um, indirect method. These are two examples taken from the review where uh, um, the detection method were, was, were fluorescence or chemiluminescence and two uh, probes, different probes were used in order to obtain stable species uh, which can be revealed, revealed and uh, to obtain information about uh, superoxide. The last example of this kind of, uh, of uh, situation is the carbonate radical ion, an ion, which is generally produced uh, by in presence of hydroxyl radical in water, in, uh, by um, oxidation of um, 
carbonate or hydrogen carbonate uh, ion, an ion. Uh, also, um, carbonate radical ion, uh, it's unstable with a lifetime of, in the order of microsecond. It's not so easy to obtain, uh, to use uh, different probes in order to um, add the, the radical to uh, a probe and to measure the presence of the final species. Uh, in the literature, there are some examples. In this case, uh, we'll use the nine direct method, which uh, is uh, derived from the reaction of uh, carbonate radical ion with a phenol, and the, uh, the presence of a phenoxyl radical was um, observed. And usually, what uh, they are uh, considered is, are the um, products of the successive oxidation of, uh, and rearrangement of the phenoxyl radical. So, uh, in this case, you can use the GCMFs or HPLC UV uh, technique in order to analyze the presence of the uh, final products of this reaction. It, which will be benzokinone, catechol, endrodokinone, etc. So, they are very, very small uh, number of examples, but I repeat, in the literature, there are many, many information about this kind of approach. When I want to, uh, to pass the last of my time uh, to speak about uh, electron spin resonance, because in my experience, uh, students are not so confident with this technique. Usually, in, uh, in our courses, uh, we studied, uh, we have uh, a courses about nuclear magnetic resonance, but not about electron spin resonance. So, the electron spin resonance is the result of the properties of, uh, intrinsic properties of electrons. Uh, you know, uh, that electrons uh, have a magnetic moment associated with their quantized angular moment. So, uh, the magnetic moment of the electron generates a magnetic field during the movement of the electrons. And the energy of this uh, magnetic, uh, the energy depending from this uh, movement in, of the uh, magnetic moment uh, depends from the um, spin number of the electron, plus or minus one half, and uh, the intensity of the magnetic field. And uh, obviously, by also by different constants which are related with the properties of electron. But uh, in, uh, for the practical use of this uh, uh, kind of uh, specific properties, we are interested to put your, our attention about uh, magnetic spin and uh, magnetic field intensity. Obviously, if uh, uh, two electrons are present in the same orbital, like uh, happens in the majority of the substances, the two magnetic moments are strongly coupled. So, in principle, we don't observe any effect of the presence of the magnetic field, of an external magnetic field, and uh, we don't uh, are able to obtain information in linear principle or obtain information uh, by this technique uh, on uh, space or non radicalic species. But uh, when we have uh, radicalic species, which are one or more than one uh, uh, umpire electron, we have uh, some uh, possibilities. In fact, if we can take a look to the situation of the spins uh, in absence of a magnetic uh, external magnetic field for radical species, uh, we have uh, this kind of, of a situation with uh, random orientation of the spins uh, and uh, similar energy depending from the magnetic moment. But when we put the radicals uh, in uh, a magnet in external magnetic field, uh, the uh, intrinsic uh, magnetic moment of the electrons uh, interacts with the external magnetic field, so we have uh, an alignment of the spins into the 
magnetic field, uh, with, and they uh, um, have, in this case, different energies depending from the spins. So, we have a situation which can be used in order to obtain transitions, in order to obtain information about the properties of the species. In this condition, we can, we can do a classical ESR experiment. We put um, our sample in a cavity uh, between uh, the, um, a magnetic field, the poles of a magnetic field, and uh, we observe uh, a separation of the two levels in terms of energy depending from uh, the, magnet the, number, um, the quantic number and uh, the intensity of the field. Now, if we are able to add uh, a, another energy to the sample, for example, by a microwave source, we obtain uh, the possibility to match the two effects. And uh, we have uh, a possibility when the separation, the level, separa level separation in the energy levels uh, is equal to the energy of the uh, frequency, we have a possibility to have uh, an inversion of the spins and to observe something. So we have uh, the, uh, an absorption of energy by the electrons at the lower level and uh, um, a release of energy by the electron at the upper level. But the two populations are not equal. They respond to the Boltzmann law. Uh, the difference of uh, population, the different population uh, depending from the temperature and um, from the delta E. So, what we have uh, is uh, an absorption of energy. We can, we can uh, reveal this absorption and obtain an information about the species. Um, generally, the instrument, EPR instrument, is uh, ESR instrument uh, are made in a um, specific way in order to obtain not the absorption curve, but the first, its first derivative. It depends from different technical aspects uh, and from uh, the, uh, uh, some problems about uh, the um, uh, line width of the, the absorption curve. So, this is the aspect of a typical line in EPR uh, spectroscopy and uh, a part of a typical spectrum where we can uh, observe in uh, the literature. This is the principle. But, uh, obviously, if uh, the principle depends on the presence of an, ele an empire an electron, but we have not, it, this is not uh, so informative if uh, it's, uh, it is not dependent from a chemical environment, like in NMR. In NMR, we observe the presence of coupling with uh, magnetic uh, spin number of uh, hydrogen, for example, with other uh, nucleus in the direct environment. So, the, this is the same situation. If, uh, if a nucleus uh, in the environment of the empire electron, so the nucleus which belongs to the electron itself uh, or visinal electron, visinal nucleus, have a magnetic quantum number different from zero, we have different uh, interaction, different level of energy, and uh, depending from two mechanism, and uh, we obtain uh, more lines, which are depending from the coupling between uh, the empire electrons and the nucleus. So depending from the environment and informative about the properties of, the of this species. Um, okay. The number of lines depend from the m i value for, uh, in, for uh, coupling with hydrogen atom, we have uh, two lines. And the coupling, for the coupling of uh, 14 uh, nitrogen atoms, we have uh, three lines. 
This is important because uh, most of the species we um, use to obtain information about radicals containing, contains uh, nitrogen atoms. Uh, moreover, the distance between the lines depends from the difference of energy in, in the different transition, so it's informative about the coupling. And we can directly measure on the spectrum the distance and to obtain information about the intensity of the coupling. If uh, our radicals are relatively stable, we can measure directly, directly uh, their uh, ESR spectrum. If not, uh, we have to use, uh, again, a method to trap it. So the spin trapping technique is the most popular technique uh, in ESR to obtain information about uh, transient radicals. Uh, the method involves the addition of a specific compound, like other kind of probes, in order to obtain a stable system which can be revealed in, uh, during the experiment. Um, the objective, objective is obviously to hopefully obtain a longer lived radical adduct that can be relayed, revealed, recorded, identi identified. We are, in general, we have two types of uh, spin traps, which are related with uh, NO groups. Because in general, the NO groups uh, uh, is a quite stable radical. We have nitroso and nitron compounds. The, in the nitroso compound, we have, for example, the MPO, which is the most popular spin trapping, which can uh, see very, a very large number of uh, papers where, where the MPO is used to obtain stable radicals. And in general, nitroso compounds are not so informative because the radical was added not directly to, to the NO um, bond where the umpired electron is delocalized, but in the lateral position, in side position, so the, uh, the intensity of the coupling is not so high. But, uh, Generally, nitroso compounds are stable and have an high affinity for ROS. On the other hand, nitron compounds are uh, more informative, but less stable and not uh, so uh, useful to uh, obtain a uh, um, stable radical with uh, oxygen species. They are normally used for carbon central radicals. Um, briefly, what we have uh, are, is uh, a spectrum depending from the coupling. So, different uh, spectrum uh, depending from the different uh, intensity of the coupling with, with hydrogen related to the type of uh, radical species with, which with, was added to the DMPO. Uh, in principle, all the lines in EPR spectroscopy have the same intensity because uh, each transition has the same probability to happen. But in some experiments, we can observe a line with different uh, uh, intensity. This is due only to the superimposition of uh, different group of lines, which are another way to obtain information. In fact, uh, the Oh. Okay, this is the typical, more typical spectrum of DMPO OH adduct, which is characterized by four lines equally spaced with uh, the internal line with a double intensity respect to the external lines. When we observe this kind of spectrum, we are sure of the presence of hydroxy radical in solution trapped by this technique. More problems can be solved okay. by using uh, different uh, spin traps for different species. For example, if we need to obtain um, 
information about superoxide radicals, it's not a good choice to use DMPO because uh, DMPO is particularly, uh, has a particular affinity for redoxyl radicals. So also if we have a different concentration of the two species, we have uh, the possibility to observe especially the adopt with reduct with OH and not with superoxide. But we can use different uh, um, kind of uh, spin trap uh, in order to attain different spectra and different information. Okay. Uh, only one example, and stop. <laughs> uh, it's uh, the case of a not radical, not a radical species like uh, singlet oxygen, but we can use also the kind of a technique by using um, the right uh, trapping methods. So in the presence of a species like um, TMP, uh, Oxygen, uh, single oxygen generates uh, a nitroxyl uh, group, uh, a radical nitroxyl group, and we can observe this kind of spectrum, which is simply dependent from the interaction of uh, the coupling from the uh, unpaired electron and the nitrogen atom. Because in the near uh, atoms of carbon, we have um, all the hydrogen are substituted. When this is only one example. Uh, some references can be useful, I think, to obtain information uh, about this technique. And before to finish, I will only spend uh, some seconds to remember you that uh, the next uh, 11th uh, Congress, European Congress about uh, solar chemistry and photochemistry, environmental application will be from one year in Torino. And if you know, if you need uh, some information about uh, this, uh, you can talk with Paula <laughs> or Alessandra, <laughs> which are in the local organizing committee. And then thank you for your attention.